Hello there, everybody. My name is Lunar of Lunar Witch Stitchery, and I hope that you're all doing well today. Um, yeah, I'm doing a bit better than the last time you guys saw me, thankfully. Um, apologies in advance if there ends up being any lipstick on my teeth. I am super incapable of noticing it when I'm filming for some reason, so um, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but hello! I have a lot of really cool stuff to show you guys today. Um, and some things to talk about. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Right off the bat, um, I wanted to uh, mention some folks that had talked about me in some of their floss tube videos, which is like wild. Um, <laughs> but a uh, big thank you to Queen V, Cam the Stitcher, Elizabeth Savory, and Viking Stitches for the shout outs in your videos. Um, I watched them all, all the way through and I really, really appreciate it. I don't really know like what suddenly can compelled multiple floss tubers to uh, mention me in their videos, but um, I don't know. It's it's really cool. It made me really happy. Um, I was telling my partner about it and um, yeah, I don't know. It was just, it was just kind of wild. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys so much. I believe it was Queen V and Elizabeth Savory were um, newer or new floss tubers. Um, so welcome to the community. Again, thank you for shouting me out. I really appreciate it. And I wish you guys the best of luck with your channel. Viking stitches I have seen in my comments section before. I love them very much. Uh, so it was really cool to get a shout out from you if you're watching this. I hope that you are. Um, I always look forward to chatting with you in my comments whenever you're down there. Um, and then Cam the Stitcher. I can't believe I didn't know about her channel <laughs> before this. Um, one thing about me is I am really bad at finding, <laughs> like, new floss tubers. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just, like, because of the way that my brain is, I really like to watch, like, the same or similar things a lot. Uh, it's uh, kind of an anxiety comfort thing and also, like, the... Um, autism ADHD brain kicking in as well. Like, oh, we like this thing. Let's just do it over and over. So <laughs> um, I'm super bad at finding new floss tubers. So um, all of these mentions were great because I could go to these people's channels and watch them. But Cam in particular has a lot of pieces that really overlap with my interests. Um, and just like personality wise too, I was like, girl, I feel like we could be friends. So hi Cam, if you're watching this, <laughs> I think you're really cool. And I feel like we would get along really well. Um, I love your vibe. <laughs> and I also loved your vintage Twilight merch. Um, in her most recent video, when I'm posting this, uh, she was wearing some Twilight stuff. And I just need you guys to know that I absolutely love Twilight. I mean, like I hate it, but I also love it. <laughs> um, I was super into it back in ye olden days. And then um, Stephanie Meyer came out with Midnight Sun um, a few years ago and I went out and bought it and it just like sent me down this uh, Twilight Renaissance uh, rabbit hole. If you guys are into Twilight and you're not in the Twilight shit posting group on Facebook, you absolutely have to join it. It is so fun. Um, everybody in that group is so funny. Uh, there's also a um, sister group. It's kind of like the backup group slash like the weirdo group <laughs> called Twilight Sewer Posting. Um, I also love Twilight Sewer Posting. It is so stupid and it's just, it's such a good way to turn your brain off. So um, anyway, <laughs> that was a, a little side tangent, but um, yes, thank you guys once again for shouting me out. I really appreciate it. Um, I get really nervous about like talking to other creators um, because I know that um, my personality can be kind of a lot and um, I'm kind of one of those people that refuses to turn my personality off or dilute it for other people. So I, I totally understand that I'm not everybody's cup of tea. So I don't always interact with the channels that I do watch regularly just because I'm like nervous that I'm going to be um, like too weird or too annoying or whatever. So um, again, it's just really exciting to feel like I am involved in the community in some way, even though I'm like really bad at talking to people. 
So <laughs> yeah. This is a little bit sappy too, um, but if you guys didn't know, I think I've talked about this before, maybe. Um, but this is actually my third YouTube channel that I've ever had. Um, so my original one is called Blood Moon Fairy. Um, it actually started off in 2012 as a Pokemon trading card channel. Um, and then it kind of transitioned into cosplay later on. Um, I also have a witchcraft channel that I only posted on for about a year. And then I have this one. Um, and I haven't felt so like involved in a community on YouTube since I did those Pokemon trading card videos over 10 years ago. Um, and that was another very niche, like very small, tight knit community, kind of like how Floss Tube is, um, where a lot of people all knew each other. And um, back in those days, we would like trade Pokemon cards through the mail and stuff like that. And everybody would always watch everybody else's videos and everything. So, um, and I, I just like kind of lost that that feeling um, ever since I transitioned into doing cosplay content on that channel. But doing Flosstube has been really cool because people are just so nice. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I've only ever gotten like one mean comment and it wasn't even really, it was just funny. Um, somebody was like, do you go out of the house looking like that with those whiskers on your face? And I'm like, oh, I see. This is somebody clutching their pearls on my behalf. Um, <laughs> uh, and I just thought it was funny. But, like, that's literally the meanest comment I've ever got. Whereas, like, when I did witchcraft content, it was a lot of, like, gatekeeping and you're too young to be, like, teaching people about this, even though I had been practicing for uh, well over a decade. Um, people saying that, like, there's only one right way to do things and just all this... It was not my favorite. <laughs> and then the cosplay community was just a little bit oversaturated and it was hard to get um, that like personal interaction on your videos and stuff. So coming to Flosstube has been really cool. Um, this is a super long, <laughs> super long ramble. I'm so sorry. Basically, thank you for the shout outs. I really appreciate them. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not more active and talkative on other people's videos. I'm just nervous and shy. That is the gist of what I'm trying to say here. So now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to go over some of my life stuff first uh, to give context for the rest of my video. So if you'd like to skip ahead, you can absolutely do that in my little video bar, but you don't have to. <laughs> Up to you. So thank you guys so much for all of the sweet words on my last video, all of the well wishes. Um, yeah, we are doing... A little bit better in August. Um, I mean, the bar was buried, basically. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, saying that we're doing better isn't really saying that much, but we are definitely improving. Um, Almond, my cat who went to the ER vet last time, um, he did finish his course of antibiotics uh, pretty shortly after I filmed my last video, and he is fully recovered. He's doing amazing. Um, he did still have a couple days where his voice was a little raspy, but um, he seems to have completely gotten over it now and he's back to his shit, uh, shit causing self. So <laughs> we love that. Um, and then Junji, our little kitten, um, he is a little bit over four months old now. Um, he is, well, we haven't weighed him in a little bit, but the last time I weighed him, he was almost five and a half pounds, which is amazing. Uh, he's almost doubled his weight since we got him at the beginning of July, which is really great because when we got him, he was like skin and bone. Um, unfortunately, after my last video, we did get a fecal test result back and he did unfortunately get reinfected with Giardia. Um, this is extremely common, unfortunately, again. Um, I did have a little bit of a breakdown over that, <laughs> um, but... It, it's okay. Um, he has received another two rounds of treatment. Uh, he just finished his third uh, dose of medication today. Um, today is August 25th, Friday. Um, you guys might, might not be seeing this until Monday, but we just finished his last dose of medication and we are really, 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 really hoping that this will kick it for good. Um, I'm feeling fairly confident, knock on wood. Um, 
basically I explained in my last video but Giardia is a like fecal to mouth contamination type deal and so when cats go to the bathroom they do like lick their butt um, and when you have diarrhea from Giardia you can get poop particles all over the place uh, which just causes it to spread um, and it makes it so that it's really easy to get reinfected so um, Ruben and I for the past month have been changing the litter boxes out entirely every day. Um, we've been wiping Junji's little butt every time he goes to the bathroom. Um, we've been bagging and removing his Giardia poop from the litter boxes immediately um, so that nobody else is going into the litter box and coming into contact with it. We've been disinfecting the house pretty frequently. Um, we've been washing food and water dishes every day. So it has been, frankly, exhausting um, <laughs> and expensive. Uh, cat litter is not cheap when you're going through a 35 pound pail of it every three to four days. So uh, that's been really hard, but um, I am feeling pretty good. <laughs> Um, it's really difficult for me to be optimistic about that just because everybody keeps telling me how hard it is to get rid of Giardia. Um, and in my head, I'm like, has any cat ever been cleared of Giardia? This is like impossible. But um, I know that we're doing everything that we can. Um, and yeah, we just have to wait and see. Um, <laughs> Junji has another vet appointment on Monday, the 20 something <laughs> uh the 28th um so he'll be getting his last round of kitten shots that day hopefully we'll be scheduling his neuter um <laughs> which would be great because his testicles are looking large and i would like to get them out of here um and then we'll be doing a fecal test and then another fecal test in two weeks to make sure that he definitely does not have giardia anymore um so once we get two negative tests in a row we will be doing better. Uh, pretty much after you get those two negative tests, it's like, well, you're pretty much in the clear. So um, we shall see. <laughs> please, 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 please keep us in your thoughts, um, whatever that means for you. Um, I am trying to like manifest as much, as much positive energy about this as possible um, because I really just need him to be healthy <laughs> and I need to stop changing litter boxes every single day. I am so tired. So that's that fun stuff. Um, other stuff I've been up to, we, Ruben and I went hiking with my parents at Devil's Lake last week, um, which is a state park kind of in central Wisconsin. Um, it was pretty fun. My dad's knees were really killing him that day, so we couldn't really go as high as we wanted to, which is fine. Um, but it was also like 95 degrees and like 1000% humidity and the trail that we were on had horse flies. Uh, <laughs> so we all got horse fly bites, which was awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, we still had a good day uh, despite that. Um, the weekend before that, Ruben and I went um, Halloween decoration shopping with one of my best friends. So that was super cool. We also went antiquing. Um, we got a cool mirror. I rescued some Monster High dolls. <laughs> um, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but um, I have fairly recently started collecting Monster High dolls. I think they're just really fun. So um, I rescued a couple girlies from, from the antique store who were looking a little worse for wear. Um, and I'm trying to kind of fix them up. So they're looking much better now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Literally, my life has been so consumed by uh, specifically just the kitten. Um, every day, all I think about is kittens and kitten poop and cleaning the house. <laughs> so yeah, that has been my life. Also, if you're wondering, I haven't addressed this yet. These are uh, taxidermied skunk feet. I don't really wear these that often because I'm actually allergic to the fur, so it gives it gives me rashes on my neck. Um, but I just love them. I think they're delightful. Okay, so that is everything I have for life stuff and for uh, floss tube mentions. So 
Let's finally get into the actual floss tube stuff now that I have been recording for almost 17 minutes. So first up, I have a finish as promised. Um, I promised you guys last time that the next time you saw my dark queen of the earth that she would be done. And guess what she is? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, so here she is in all of her glory. I love her so much. Um, I named her Lilith. So she is stitched uh, two over two on 32 count linen and nightshade from Under the Sea Fabrics, which is one of the fabrics that is for the sale. Um, I did a lot of modifications on this, even though it might not seem like it. Um, so her skin is stitched over one. Um, I changed a lot of places that were just light yellow to be the silk lame, um, particularly the very tips of her hair um, and her eyes and some other stuff. <laughs> um, I also changed the color of the beads on her ankles. I thought they were supposed to all be green and I thought she just needed something else. Um, what else did I change? Oh, the 841, which is the lightest brown in the branch. Uh, I mixed in a single strand of a metallic floss and I did not stitch the corner thingies. Um, they're supposed to be little corners and I did not stitch those. Um, I think that's all the major ones. I did stitch the optional arm tattoos. I also added a little bead to the middle of her chest because I just felt like it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of her. Um, I, towards the end there, I was really like, I, is it worth it? Like, uh, I just, I just, I'm so done with this, but, um, I'm really happy I pushed through to finish her. Um, it was a huge pain in the ass to stitch this with a four month old kitten. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did it anyway. So, oh, also the beads I did with one strand of matching DMC. We are planning on getting her framed soon. Uh, Ruben loves her and desperately wants her in our living room. Um, so she will not go and sit in a drawer. <laughs> um, she will be framed probably the next time I get paid. I can't lie, the backstitch on that kind of kicked my ass. Um, <laughs> it, it was just a lot and, um, I felt like the lines didn't always sit where I wanted them to. Um, they didn't really intersect nicely with stitches all the time. Um, and then some sections are two strands of backstitch and some sections are one. So I had to look at two charts at the same time to discern color and line thickness, um, which is just kind of a hassle. <laughs> like I understand why they did it that way, but um, yeah, once I got like to the bottom half of her, I was like fully over it <laughs> at that point. So the beads, um, I actually had a really good time beading this. Um, it was my first time beading a cross stitch. So I have actually done beading on like cosplay and uh, like other costume stuff before. So I do know, like I did know how to bead already going into this, but I had never beaded on a cross stitch in particular. And I had a great time. I thought it was so fun. I absolutely loved it. Um, I did like these couple beads in invisible thread and immediately decided that I hated it. Uh, <laughs> I just, it is so obnoxious to get it on your needle, secured to the fabric. Um, and I feel like I just couldn't get the beads to be as tight and as secure as I wanted them to be. Um, when I did the rest of them in um, cotton, I feel like when I touch them, um, they don't really move, but like when I touch these ones, I feel like they're just wiggly. Um, and maybe, oh, I didn't even touch their ones. These, right? Yeah. They just feel loose, like compared to ev literally everything else. So, um, I certainly will not be using invisible thread again. Um, <laughs> I, it f I told Ruben it felt like I was stitching with hair. Um, <laughs> I just really did not enjoy it. So... Um, I made it work with a DMC that closely matched the fabric color. 
Um, you can still see it in a couple spots, but um, like at viewing distance, it's not really something that you're going to be paying attention to. So um, I made that compromise and I am super happy that I did. I think that's everything I have to say on her. Um, like I've said in the past, I am planning to stitch the Sea Queen as well. I'm um, hoping that my partner will be having or paying for me to kit her up for Christmas this year. Um, so that should hopefully give me enough of a break to be like ready to tackle that because I know that she is a beast as well with all of those tentacles. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm really excited because um, I know Aaron and Cassandra are talking about doing um, a fire and an air queen too. So uh, I... A few months ago, I can't remember what the post was on, um, but I basically like begged them to <laughs> to please do a fire queen. And um, I think it was Cassandra replied and said that they're thinking of doing her last because Aaron wants her to be the most extravagant and over the top queen of all of them. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I know it won't be for a few years probably, but that is super exciting. Okay. Um, I think again, <laughs> that's everything I have for her. So... Um, I have a couple other whips today. I'm slouching, so um, I have to move my camera down lower, so sorry. <laughs> so um, last time I had talked about wanting to have this as a new start, but at that time I simply had not started it yet. So this time I did start it. It is so impressive. Um, this is a Kit by Gekka Rouge. I think it's just called a Madarasu. Um, and like I said, this is a new start. So here it is. Wow. <laughs> so amazing. Um, I'm pretty close to getting into color on this already. Um, this is actually two shades of white. Uh, I, this is only one sitting of work. So I did this and I was like, yo, fuck this. This sucks. <laughs> um, Pretty much all of my full coverage pieces um, are, you know, barely started. So I'm like deep in the background on pretty much all of them. And um, yeah, when I started this one, I was like, oh, it goes into the color so fast. But, you know, I still had several hundred, maybe, I don't even know if it's a thousand, but quite a few stitches before I actually hit anything interesting. So um, that was kind of a slog. I would like to get back to it because that piece is only around, I don't know, 70,000 stitches, which is really not bad, especially compared to my other full coverages, which are, um, you know, at least double that, <laughs> most of them. Um, also that's being done, um, one strand, uh, full cross on 28 count. I don't really have a lot to say about that. So let's move on. <laughs> So um, after I finished my Earth Queen, um, I had space out by the couch for another piece to keep out there. I have space for three project bags um, to stay out there at all times. So I usually keep um, Princess Serenity, uh, Odile, and uh, the Dark Queen. But now the Dark Queen is done, so I decided to fill that spot with a full coverage piece. Um, so I brought out Bohemia. This is another kit by Gekka Rouge. Original art is by Medusa Dollmaker. Um, I don't think I did too, 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 too much on this. Um, so here is where she was at the last time you guys saw her. And then um, here's where I got to. Um, again, I don't think I did too much on that. Um, this is, if I could go to the right pattern... Um, this is 3.27%. Um, I'm hoping to hit 5% on her by the end of the year, so we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm still really enjoying this. Um, I'm starting to get into some more interesting stuff. Um, if you guys can see, I'm about to hit the letters and there's like a little yellow star over here. Um, and then I'm going to be hitting, I think like some other part of her pretty soon. I can't remember, but I'm like actually starting to get into the design and not just these like abstract swirls. <laughs> so 
yeah um she's pretty fun for me to work on actually i do like it this is being done two strand tent stitch on 25 count i'm sorry if you can hear my cat uh, that's almond <laughs> i would really like to work on her some more um <laughs> i feel like it's been so long since I worked on her, but it was literally just a few days ago. Okay, and then my last whip, um, I just worked on this last night. Um, this is Princess Serenity by Make It Pink and uh, Hannah Alexander. I haven't worked on Serenity in uh, about two and a half months, according to Cross Stitch Saga, which is such a bummer because you guys know, or you probably know how much I love her. So um, here's a picture of where she was last time. And then this is what I did last night. So I really did not do a lot. I think I did under 150 stitches, but it's something. <laughs> um, Serenity is now going to be my main focus piece, pretty much. I am hoping to finish her by the end of the year, even though she is only at 32.35% at this moment. Um, but yeah, uh, now that the Dark Queen is out of the way, like I said... Um, she is going to be the main gal that I'm stitching on, so, <laughs> um, I should have a lot more time and energy to actually put into this. Um, and yeah, I'm getting pretty close to the end of her dress. Um, I have a ways yet, but, um, like over here, you can see some of the end. It does go, it, it, it goes quite far. Um, and then... I also have to move up still. I started like around her waist, so um, I have I have a ways. <laughs> but yeah, it felt so good to work on her. Oh, this is um, two over two on 36 count in Aphrodite from Under the Sea Fabrics. It felt super good to work on her. Um, I was a little bit nervous about picking her back up because it's been just so long. Um, and I was afraid I was going to get like lost or, or something. Um, but that did not happen and I had a great time. Um, and I'm really, really, really excited to be able to give her some more time and attention because again, she is like my comfort piece. Um, even though she takes a lot of focus because of the 5,000, literally 5,000 beads, <laughs> um, that she has, there's just a ton of fractionals, um, but I don't know. It's just really fun and it makes me really happy. So yay. So that's everything I worked on. Um, the Dark Queen took most of my energy because I so desperately wanted to finish. There's a deceptive amount of backstitch and beads on that. I was like, oh, I could finish this in like two days. I could not. It took me, I think I finished her like four days ago. I think I finished her on the 21st. So <laughs> So, haul, I got a couple things, nothing too wild. Um, there was a day towards the beginning of August where there is a specific disinfectant spray that we need um, because of our cat that has Giardia. And um, it is the Nature's Miracle Platinum uh, Viral Spray, something like that. Um, it's super helpful because you can spray it on literally everything. Um, it's a, it is like a chlorine based, uh, disinfectant, but it hasn't affected the color of anything. So we literally can put it on everything, leave it to dry for like 20 minutes and then we're set. Um, unfortunately when you do that in our entire apartment, it uses up a bottle in just a couple of days. So, um, we ran out and our pet store was not getting it in stock, not getting it in stock. And we desperately needed it. Um, and it wasn't going to come in time if we ordered it. So I took a trip all the way to the Twin Cities, um, which is, you know, like an hour and a half from where I live. Um, and I went to their PetSmart and picked up cats or disinfectant spray there. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I ended up making a day out of it um, since it was going to be such a drive. And there is a stitching store, um, I think it's in Minnetonka, that I have been to before. And so I decided to swing by and just like take a look. <laughs> um, I didn't get anything too crazy. But my favorite thing I got was a 
scissor fob, which is so unnecessary. Um, this has a little snake at the end and then these really, really pretty beads. I love this. It is so ridiculous and um, I did not need to buy it, but I love it so much. Also, I don't know if I've ever shown my scissors before. This is them. Um, I adore them. Ruben has the same ones. <laughs> but uh, yes, I love this. Um, it has definitely become a cat toy, so I try to keep it away from them as much as I can. But if they see it, they're like, oh, bitch, what that cat toy doing? <laughs> so... <laughs> But I love it. It's a CC toy also. Uh, CC is my real name. I don't really know uh, how many of you guys know that. Anyway, um, I also picked up a tacky bob. Um, I wanted something for beading and they happened to have this. So that's what I got. It kind of looks like a CD case and then it pops open and it's sticky on the inside. Um, I still have beads in here from the Dark Queen, but... I really liked this. Um, I wish I didn't have cats or black uh, clothing because there's lint and cat hair up in this bitch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. I'm pretty happy with how sticky it is. It held the beads really well, even like the larger ones I could put in here and they were fine. Um, and it's nice that like it closes so securely so I know that my cats are not going to get into um, the beads and eat them, which would be very bad. So, um, yeah, that was, this is a good purchase. I enjoyed it. Uh, I also picked up some, uh, size 28 Bohin, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, tapestry needles for beading. Um, I'd heard people talking about them online because, um, most beading needles are sharp and long and I did not want to deal with that. <laughs> when you're beading clothing or costumes, the, the fabric doesn't usually already have holes in it. So you do need a sharp needle for that. But for cross stitch, there's holes already. So you don't need to punch one with a sharp needle. So um, I had been, all the beading needles I have are sharp. So I'd been thinking about getting something else, but the... Um, beads didn't fit over the eye of my regular needle. So, um, these ones, I don't have the pack of them with me, but they worked just fine. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to work with like the tiniest beads that I have. The really, really tiny mill hills. I'll have to see. Um, but they did work. The dark queen used delicas. Um, so it worked with those. So I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> That's it for haul. Um, plans. I don't really have anything like too specific. Like I said, um, I do want to focus on Serenity. She's kind of my main girly at the moment. Um, and then I have been thinking about the Bella Filipina Mermaids of the Seasons cell. Um, yeah, I, so here's the thing. Um, Mermaid, mer mermaids are not really like my thing. Um, I'm pretty picky about them. I don't dislike them. It's just, um, I'm not, I don't, there's a few that I really like, but with the amount of mermaid fancy ladies that there are, it's like, okay, there's too many and I'm not crazy about all of them. Um, if you are, that's awesome. That I love that for you. Uh, it's just like my own personal taste. Uh, they're not like super high up there. Um, but I do really like Belle Filipina and all of the mermaids that I've seen from them, I at least like. Um, I'm, I wouldn't stitch all of them, but I do at least like them. Um, and I love seasonal shit. <laughs> so um, I've been tossing up about joining that sal. Um, yeah, I think I've decided I'm going to wait until the first one comes out just so I can kind of get an idea of what they're going to look like. Um, from my understanding, they aren't as big as a normal fancy lady. Um, I think they're all for sharing one fat quarter, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, but yeah, I am super excited. It's uh, The fabric is being done by Fiberlicious, so... Um, if you want to take a look at it, I think it's on their website. This is also the first time Bella... Fil oh my god. This is also the first time Bella Filipina is doing a PDF pattern. 
Um, so it is going to be available worldwide. You don't have to worry about getting a paper pattern shipped to you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really interested in it. I don't know that it's necessary for me to, <laughs> to start, but, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it is. Um, yeah, let me know if any of you guys are planning on getting in on that sale and what you're thinking about it because, um, I've been pretty excited about it. And that's really it. Um, I'm hoping as we get more into fall, I will have more time and energy to stitch. And again, please, please, please keep us in your thoughts um, with like my cat uh, and trying to get rid of his parasite. It is super difficult. Um, and after he is fully healthy, I really think, I really think things are going to be a lot better for us uh, in a lot of ways. But my stitching time will definitely be better because I won't be spending all my energy changing the litter box every single day. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Um, let me know. I don't know if you'd hear that. That's my air conditioner turning on. Let me know in the comments what you guys are stitching on uh, lately and I will talk to you next time. Bye!